Hi, welcome back to Laptop Seniors. Today, Pat and I are going to do an ad lib comparison of the similarities, differences between Uruguay, Montevideo in particular, yes. Argentina, Buenos Aires in, in particular, particular. <laughs> and Panama. All of it. <laughs> All of it, but I'd say mainly Panama City and maybe Boquete, like the larger centers basically. So we, we really appreciate going through the comments that come in every day. You guys ask us questions about some of the different places. And this question of doing a comparison came in from one of our subscribers very early on. And every now and then it pops up. We had one last, just this, last week, it, it popped up, same question. Can you do that because you've lived in all three? Yeah, so we've spent extended lengths of time in all three places. So we're hoping that you're interested in seeing our thoughts, hearing our thoughts, and seeing us <laughs> jab each other a little bit about uh, what our thoughts are. And they're often different about the same places. Yeah, so we've not talked about what each of us are going to say. So I don't know what exactly she's going to say and what her high points, low points are of each country or city. And she doesn't know mine, too. So it could be... <laughs> It could be interesting. Could think, be a little sparring session. Yeah, so maybe, maybe not. Yeah, hopefully not. Um, I don't want to be like study and share here going at it. But, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of it we're going to sort of agree on. So let's start with the first country, which is Uruguay. Uruguay. We lived down there for basically, you know, almost two years. And we had a wonderful time there. It was a wonderful country. The people were great, they were friendly, they were open, they were nice. It was a nice country, loved Montevideo. We were living there in Positos, which is right on the river. Although the river looks like an ocean, when you're standing on the beach, huge beach that went on for miles, you look out and you think, you know, it's the Atlantic Ocean. In front yeah, of so if you look at a map, you'll see the ocean sort of narrows down a little bit between Uruguay and Argentina, and then the mouth closes into a river. Even though you're in a city of a million, it was kind of like a beach town in that area. So we loved it there. We rented a house there and uh, it was great. The restaurants were nice. There was really good food. It was a safe country. One of the things that we found there was there were pockets where you didn't need any Spanish, but generally speaking, you kind of needed a little bit of Spanish. We were just learning Spanish then. I'd say we were talking like three-year-olds maybe four-year-olds <laughs> at best, and that was enough. But, you know, you'd run into people who did not have any English, including in restaurants. So, you know, there was that. Um, they had really good health care, depending on the hospital that you went to. Some, even though we didn't go to them, but hearing from people there, um, they were like, okay. But then there was other hospitals that had to do with kind of like the country where the doctors were from, like the British hospital. Whew, that was superb. That was like walking into a, a W hotel and you're like, wow, this is a hospital? Holy moly, all British doctors. It was. The Italian hospital, other countries' hospital. Um, so the hospital was, uh, care was really good. And you could actually buy a hospital plan mm -hmm. for the hospital that you choose. So whenever you needed any services, you would just go to that hospital where you had the care plan. And it was pretty reasonable at the time. As, as I recall, it was something like four or 500 bucks for the year for both of us, unlimited care in that hospital. And if you needed to, you had a $500,000 flight plan that if they would fly you back to the US or Canada, if it was something they couldn't handle, if you wanted to do that, that was sort of part of it. I mean, it was, it was, but you had to be under 65. At the time, I was, um, because, you know, it was a while ago. So, uh, anyway, healthcare, really, really good. The climate was pretty good, I, I thought. I mean, for the most part, it was, it was warm year round or. Mm, mm. You're forgetting. You no, know, I was just going to say, except for some months where it was like kind of like a cold fall weather and places don't have heat for a lot of the a lot of our house didn't have any heat well uruguay these. is about as far south of the equator as central us is above so they do have seasons there uh, there's there's a winter that's for sure but from north america going to uruguay or buenos aires 
you're actually going opposite seasons. So if you want to be a snowbird, for example, and stay in the U.S. in the summer and travel and get out of it in the winter, in the winter down there, it's their summer. Mm -hmm. So you could be in summer all year round. Yeah, and it's true. When you look at the water in the drains, it actually does go the opposite way. <laughs> um, one of the things about it too, being on the opposite side of the world, it's a long flight. Um, so that's it not is. really a positive. It's sort of one of the negatives to a degree. But it depends how far yeah. up in the U.S. or Canada you are as to how long it is. Yeah. And you could stop over. You could stop over in Panama and hang out there for a week and then go down. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the planes go to Panama. They bounce there. They bounce through El Salvador, Santiago and Chile. And, uh, you know, and some, I, well, probably not anymore. A couple of them at the time would go direct. They One nonstop flight long flight. Now, one of the other good things to me about Uruguay was that you're really close to Argentina. If you go to one of the coastal towns called Colonia, they have high-speed um, boats, you know, like Terry's cars, the whole thing. The buque boots. Called the Cat. Yeah. I think they call the fast one the Cat. Yeah, that's the name of the ship. The actual company is the buque bus, which looks like bouquet bus. Bouquet bus. Yeah, and they're <laughs> fairly lavish inside. And it's fun just to say it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, one hour, one hour from from uh, you know coast to coast, boom, you're in downtown Buenos Aires. You know, getting off the boat from the other country. A lot of people do that about residences. They'll go as a tourist, and then they have to get out of the country, and they'll go. You know, they'll take a weekend or a day trip to Buenos Aires. And for immigration, you're like, basically you're punching out, you know, in Uruguay, you go to the other side and then you come back. Some of them come back four or five hours later and they punch back in again. All new tourist visa, good to go. And that's how they live. They don't go through the residency process. The residency process itself, did you have something you want to add in? Oh, I was just going to say it works vice versa as well. So somebody who is not a resident in Argentina could just yep. get out of town going over to Montevideo or Colonia for the day or two or for a visit and then come back and it renews their visa. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, we found it was easy. We went, to, we went through a lawyer. I think the company name, the lawyer's name was Fisher and Schickadance, something like that. Chicken Dance, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Schick. Like, you know, like, <laughs> kind of like their shaver, Chicken Dance. Anyway, we went through them and they were really good and they got us a temporary residence visa like really quickly. From that point on, it was a chore, you know, um, and it really aggravated the crap out of me, which is one of the reasons why we left. It was actually the main reason. We never got the permanent residence even with the lawyer. And we also ran into a bunch of expats there. Again, that goes along with, you know, the people being so nice. There were a lot of expats from all over the world, a lot of North American ones, easy to make friends. And we made a lot of friends there. And I'll go into that in a second. But because of so many friends, you get to know of people who have been living there for a while. And we encountered a bunch of people who they also could not get their it just wouldn't happen. They wouldn't get their permanent resident status. Or we, we, we saw one guy, he, he was there like 15 years, solid, never left. He's like in the country 15 years, married a Uruguayan, opened a restaurant with her because she was a chef. He's there and he's going for his Panamanian citizenship because in theory, that's the big thing, theory, you can get it and you know oh, and after I think it's five years or whatever it does it doesn't really matter what the time it is You know if you go through all the stages all the steps be there a certain amount of time Some of it is investing which it was a different amount of money back then I think than it is now, but the frustrating part for us is meeting all these people who had gone through checked off all the boxes gone through the steps had been there way longer than the initial criteria and they still couldn't get the documents. It was really difficult for them and we just thought we're not going to go through five or ten years of this just to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'll throw it out now. I was going to save it to the end. My impression with Uruguay was it was a wonderful country. The people were great. I loved everything about it. We have a, had a wonderful time. Met a ton of expats who actually all left. They all went to Spain, Alicante, all of them. So I guess that says something. Well, yeah. no, one went to Panama. 
but he was from Panama. He just went back. You're right. Okay. Um, he came there because maybe you know, Uruguay was the hot place at the time. That, that you know, was, when you go back ten years ago and you look at all of the international where you're going to retire type sites, and Uruguay was like the poster child. Uruguay and Ecuador, that's where you go. You know, and for all the right reasons, safe, stable, good currency, all that sort of stuff. Um, so he went from Panama and came and, okay, well, maybe I should live here. And then went back, <laughs> you know, and everybody else, everybody else left. We left because it became really apparent to us. And I think right now they altered some of the rules. But if you get, want to get a permanent residence in um, Uruguay, you have to buy something for $100,000 or more. So all of a sudden there's a $100,000 ticket to get that resident card. But this is the way it worked when we were there. You have the temporary and then they have the address where you live and someone will come and show up at your door, unannounced, surprise visit, and you had better be there. And they don't tell you if they came, they don't leave anything at the door, like, hey, we were, or if they did, no one ever came. So we were there like a year, nobody came. My take was they just wanted retirees to show up there with the possibility of getting permanent residence, the possibility of maybe becoming a citizen down the road, but they wanted you to spend money on rent, they wanted you to buy things, and they wanted you to just spend your money in that country and never and come around to give it to you. And they dangled the carrot, yeah. and they kept pushing the carrot further away. Yeah, so, you know, and I think a lot of people would catch on to that at some point, you know, became really obvious to us. So like I told you in a bunch of other videos, if some country isn't treating you the way you want to be treated, you bye-bye. You know, we're out of here. Mm -hmm. So if somebody from Uruguay is watching this right now and you want to have retirees bolster your country, the thing to do for you is copy Panama because Panama does it 100% correctly on the money. That's okay, what you gotta no do. preaching. Sorry, I know, but, but <laughs> it's... It, it, you take the next part, but it's kind of aggra aggravating to me still after 10, 12 years. It is. But there are a lot of good things about Montevideo, Uruguay. Loved it. Uh, Punta del Este is fantastic. Yep. Oh my gosh, you've got to look at that on the internet. Um, and do you remember asking me years ago? Um, to marry you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you finally did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what my what place I would choose? What would be my favorite place to live? Yeah, and that. And what did I say? I don't remember. <laughs> Could have been anywhere. Okay, you guys. I hope you listen to your wives better than Pat does. <laughs> Was it Milwaukee? No. My Punta? answer. My answer was. And, and I didn't prepare for this at all, but my answer was at the time, I felt that we had the best lifestyle of anywhere that we had been in Montevideo yeah. because we, we rented a nice house there. We lived a block from the beach. And in Montevideo, pretty much the entire city has a, a paved um, waterfront walk. Uh, you can't call it a boardwalk. Yeah, but they call it the Malacan. And the beach is very, very wide. I want to say it's 30, 40, 50 feet wide. Yeah. Thir 50 yeah. feet of sand all the way through the city. I brought a sand wedge in early in the morning when nobody's there and they take a rake and they rake up any junk that puts on the beach. I was out there hitting, hitting sand wedges in the beach for, for, for practice. And speaking of sand <laughs> wedges, awesome. there's a golf course right downtown which one day a week is actually free for everybody. It's a and private course, but they, they open it by law to everybody, yeah, for free. Yeah, right downtown, so anybody can walk in and golf one day a week. Um, and then on Sundays, they turn the golf course into a big public park. The Malacan walkway is beautiful, and they have lighting all the way along the Malacan. So it is alive day and night. Like, you will see people walking and hanging out there and sitting on the beach all times of the day and night. Yeah, and, and running, it's very safe. running and bike riding and all, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's really, it's a cool, very cool area. Let's go to some of the bad things uh, that, you know, that came up 
about it was very very cheap when we were there then like just as an example we would go to dinner at a nice restaurants because the food was good it's a meat country just like argentina so you know you're getting a steak this thick and it's you know it's huge it's like i don't know like a 14 15 ounce steak two steaks baked potato salad to start um also maybe that fried cheese thing which a provoleta get one of those Provoleta. and a bottle of wine and you're out of there for 35 bucks us for both of us it was wonderful now the steaks are not typically the kind of cut you would see in the us you know if you go to longhorn and you get that nice big steak um but they they're good the, they're different types of cuts of meat and you have to learn what they are there's different different cuts and in the spanish word for what they are so Bite lomo. Me, Lomo. That, yeah, that was, that was that the good was one. A good I, don't, one. I don't know what that, I think that was corresponded to something. Uh, like tenderloin. Tender, yeah, like it was, it was really, really good. But anyway, so that's the way it was now. Now, when you, uh, again, we haven't been back, but I know from talking to our friends in Buenos Aires about their experience in the town of Salto, which is n north of Buenos Aires and on the western side of Uruguay, where it used to be where Argentinians would drive over to Uruguay to shop and things. Now it's the other way around where there's a flood of Uruguayans going into Argentina because the prices are so much higher now in Uruguay and so much lower in Argentina. So the prices have really gone up. When we were there, um, as a negative to me, imports of anything was incredibly expensive. Yeah. And other stuff that was there that was maybe made there or it was imported from china which is pretty much the only importing thing that wasn't irrationally high um, from our experience it is really fairly cheap junk stuff especially pots and pans and you know they're like really thin and you know all that the pots were good. disgusting we definitely um in one of our trips going back brought our own stainless steel pan and pots <laughs> it was like i know when we were there now picture this a hyundai elantra an mm -hmm. elantra in u.s dollars in the dealership as was one right by where we lived it was thirty-five thousand dollars at the time back home it's like i don't know 20 21 somewhere in there and you would only be able to buy spaghetti sauce imported they did not make their own spaghetti sauce for example so um, in, in the food department, any of the pre-made foods would definitely be imported. Everything local was, you made it from scratch. Yeah, which was actually which good, because they had some pretty cool was, things there. You know, again, it's not all bad. It was a very healthy lifestyle. Y yeah, all in all, it was really a nice country except for a few things. And again, something, those few good things, or, the, or some of the good things that really made it great, aren't the same anymore. It's not quite as safe. That appears to be, you see that on the forums for Uruguay a lot. It is nowhere near as cheap as it was for a retirement thing. And also um, lots of bureaucracy there. Um, you know, and that I guess goes hand in hand with all the government stuff I was talking to you about. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of the downside uh, of Uruguay in addition to the upside. And there was a lot of upside. They're just not as many as they were before. I don't remember actually enjoying going into the city in downtown and it just always felt kind of grungy dirtier to me than than out by where we were living yeah you know and it really actually it's funny it's important to choose words carefully because I would describe it and not that you're wrong but but, but it actually definitely gives you the impression and we said it on a few videos I would say everything looked like if you went right downtown, everything looked older and a bit run down, which gave you the impression of sketchy. And not that they were dirty, but they were just, you know, older. And not that they were falling apart or anything, but, you know, it, it was like, eh, I don't know. The other thing, too, uh, and a lot of people say this, even today, you start watching videos now, people who visit, it's, it's sort of boring. Not a whole lot going on there. Now, you can take that two ways. One is, okay, it's boring, not a whole lot going on there, <laughs> not so good. Or it's a nice, quiet lifestyle, and if you like that and you want that, great place to go for that. 
So, you know, there's those things. So that's Uruguay. Let's move to Argentina now. So Argentina has some beautiful places and it's a pretty big country. I mean, who hasn't heard of Mendoza, the wine region? It's amazing. Oh, yeah. But we spent most of our time there in Buenos Aires and wow, that is a huge city. Now, some people will argue that its suburbs are not really considered part of the city, but it's a massive city with the widest road in the world. It's comparable, the city itself, I don't know, it, it's one amount of people, but the metropolitan area is, is the exact same, roughly, give or take 100,000 people, as the New York City metropolitan area. All the boroughs of New York, northern New Jersey, basically anybody who's going to be computing uh, computing? Commuting. <laughs> or computing. Maybe commuting on the train while they're computing. Anyway, coming into New York City to work. If you're working in Manhattan and, you know, and you're within that commuting distance, that's the metro area of New York City. Same size, same amount of people as Buenos Aires. So it's a big, big metropolis area. There's hands down no competition when it comes to cost of living. The value that you get living there and the low amount of money that you required with to, an exchange to maintain a good lifestyle there is incredibly low. Yeah. And so you're anywhere between 35 and 50 percent less than both Panama or Uruguay. Huge amount of websites will basically give you those numbers somewhere in between. Suffice to say that it's noticeably cheaper in Argentina if, and it's a huge if, if not, it's not going to be so cheap for you, if you, your income that you're getting is not in Argentinian pesos. Your U.S., Canadian, Euro, some other currency that's way more stable than the Argentinian peso, then, uh, you know, you're golden. You're super golden. You know, just like Uruguay, they have great people. It's a really nice country. It's a huge country. They have great food. Super food. As a matter of fact, and we have great friends that live there, so it's yeah, always yeah. fun for us to go and. I don't hang think out everybody's going to be knocking on their door here, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the things, uh, you know, when I was explaining what it cost in Uruguay when we were there to get, you know, the couple of steaks, you know, the salad, bottle of wine, all that stuff, it was pretty much the same in Argentina. The price was roughly about the same in American dollars back then. As I recall, the exchange rate was something like six pesos or eight pesos for a U.S. dollar, something like that. Now it's over a thousand pesos for a U.S. dollar. So that's how much inflation went up. But it's also why everything is so much cheaper. It's because um, because even though they have crazy inflation, their their peso hasn't kept up with it as far as the exchange rate. If you're exchanging American dollars, you just get a better deal. You're, you know, stuff becomes incredibly cheap uh, to you because of that. And as it's, you know, we mentioned very low prices there for pretty much everything. One of the things is safety. Now, I know a lot of people have put in comments. I'm sure they didn't watch maybe all of our videos. In other words, from beginning to end. And I don't remember which one it was. Who in. is it? Yeah, I don't remember which one it was. But they would say, oh, my God, turmoil and stuff like that. New president, he's doing a lot of stuff. People are, some people are complaining, not and all Pat are. Pat did a whole video on what was going on there. So look for that video. Yeah, but their sum summation was, oh my God, that's going to be brutal. You don't want to go to that country. It's super unsafe. That is 100% wrong. I can't stress that at the moment. Now, maybe somewhere down the road it might be. I mean, it could happen to any country. But at the moment, the U.S. State Department, if you want to believe the U.S. State Department, and if you don't, I don't know who you're going to believe. I mean, oh my God. They put out countries and warnings and things like that. To the U.S. State Department, Argentina, as of the end of December, we're only, you know, less than two yeah. months away, okay, from, from that reading, Argentina is safer than most parts of Western Europe. And even when we went there last, um, People would say, oh, were, were you scared? Was it unsafe? And there are definitely parts of every city that you're going to avoid. But to be truthful, we went to all the areas of Buenos Aires when we were there. We would go to the San Telmo Market on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't tell you how many other places we explored. We would even get on the subway and 
go to the end of the line and just get out and see what's there. I mean, we were mm -hmm. everywhere and we never yeah. felt unsafe. I'll put up a map here which shows red areas that are sketchy and you kind of don't want to get, go into them, especially at night, like La Boca. La Boca is one of those areas where daytime it's fine and it's a cool little area, but you don't want to be walking around there at night. You may be fine, but it's one of those wide chances. Another one is Retiro, which is over by the train station. We walked through there one time. It was a lot of people all around, but at the same time, it was like, Ooh, this is a sketchy area. We should probably walk fast to get out of here. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you could just feel it, but there's not that many of those areas. I mean, when you look at this map, you know, that's on the screen now, you can clearly see that's a big giant city and there's only a few little red areas. It's not, you know, not that big of a But deal. on the opposite side of that, there are a bunch of really beautiful areas. I mean, right downtown, sure. you've got Recoleta. Um, All the Palermos. Yes. Belgrano. Yes. Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot. For Spanish, it was, if you're in Buenos Aires, uh, I didn't really think, even with our third and fourth, uh, f you know, four-year-old Spanish, I, I, we brought, we used it because you're trying to get a little bit better and bring it up to like four and a half-year-olds. <laughs> uh, but I didn't really think we needed it there. Now, when we went to a couple towns that were outside of Buenos Aires, um, we went to uh, something, Dereco, I can't remember what the name of the town Ah, was. San Antonio, San Antonio de Dereco. For the Gaucho Festival. You definitely need Spanish there, but we went with our friends who are Argentinian and they live in Buenos Aires. They were out there, so you know anything that came up, you know they did the talking. It was great, but I don't think we would have fared all that well there. See, some Spanish would be definitely helpful. Right in the smaller villages and towns, people are less likely to be speaking English. Now, when it comes to climate, you can pretty much choose any climate you want pretty much in Argentina. You know, you can go down to Pan Patagonia, way down at the bottom, you know, you're pretty much, you know, next stop is South Pole, and it's going to be massively windy and all that sort of stuff. You can go to the mountains um, where, you know, some of the towns look like you're in Bavaria, uh, and they're very, very German. You can go to the Andes. Um, you can go inland. You can go down the coast, you know, south east of um, Buenos Aires. Um, Mar de Plata and you know when you're in coastal towns roughly though it's got the same climate around Buenos Aires as Montevideo does in Uruguay the way we described it because again it's only an hour boat ride between you know, across the river. Like Uruguay they have good health care there. We went to one hospital to give blood we met someone who was asking us a friend you know a new friend uh, hey would you give blood because the way their blood system works there, which a lot of countries are starting to do now, where if you were going to, you or a friend, relative anybody, mm -hmm. is going to go into an operation, uh, this particular person was having a heart operation and they needed five pints of blood at standby that he may or may not need, he had to donate five or get friends to donate five pints of blood, um, didn't matter who, but basically they're not going to give you five out of the hospital unless you put five in ahead of time. Yeah, so you've yeah. got to bank five pints of blood or whatever the amount is that they think you could possibly need during your surgery before they will agree to book you for surgery. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But all in all, you know, the hospitals were good. We, we, you know, we walked around through it and you know, taking, taking it all in. Also, we know from our friends who live in Buenos Aires you know, and they come back to Toronto at times and you know have been going back and forth and you know want to get treatment in you know for particular things you know in Canada and the doctors actually solved their problem in Buenos Aires where they couldn't get it solved in Canada. One last thing for visas which is uh, kind of interesting was I believe this has changed from when we were there to now. Temporary uh, residence visa in Argentina not all that hard to get. The permanent residence you can get in three years. So you get the temporary, it's a one-year visa, and then you renew it and they'll give you a two-year temporary visa, and at the end of that you get a permanent visa, so three years. Or you can do one year temporary and start the two-year thing with another temporary, but at the two-year mark Two year, this is one of the fastest in the entire world, you can apply for citizenship. And the odds are pretty decent that you're going to get citizenship if you 
hit all the qualifications. They're not going to hold it back from you like, you know, our impression Uruguay. is Uruguay was doing. Yeah. So, you know, and that's with a pension visa too. Like uh, if you want, they're equivalent of a sort of a pension auto visa like Panama has, not with all the perks, but you know, it's the retirement visa. That's a path to citizenship also, where in Panama it's not. But usually when you're old, you know, do you really care about citizenship necessarily? You know, if you have a nice place to live, probably not. But um, anyway, those are the good points. I guess points. you would, if you are wanting to surrender your citizenship from where you're leaving, if yeah. you're going, some people want to do that. So then you'd want to have citizenship somewhere else. True. And you might want to give up U.S. citizenship for the tax part. You know, there's some people do that. Not a lot, but definitely some people do that. So those are the good sides. The downsides is, you know, and I think you all have seen the news by now. They have a new president. Although he had nothing to do with this, he's trying to solve this, but they have crazy high inflation. They're pushing 140, 150, 160% per year, and he's trying to knock that down. So again, lots of inflation prices will be rising for sure, but you have a currency that basically is not gonna be, have to worry about that all that much. It's still gonna be cheap for you for a really long time, but it is a negative. Um, one of the things in Buenos Aires was I was looking at the rents. The rents there are not, they're not expensive, but they're not, they're basically like Panama City prices. They're not all that cheap either. But, uh, but uh, to me, they look comparable to Panama City. But if you wanted to go somewhere else like Mendoza or you know Patagonia or some other Salto, or one of those other smaller towns, I'm sure that they would be less. So you could you know live on less money uh, in well, Argentina. Salto is Uruguay. Yeah, well, it also, but yeah, I know there's a town on the other side, but it sort yeah. of looks like one, one, one big town in that mm -hmm. region. Um, and the other downside there is... Um, so, uh, on the other side, I believe, is Concordia. Concordia, wow. Like the University of Montreal. Like the University. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last downside to me, there's going to be a lot of demonstrations. And it's not just because of the new president. They... They, there was demonstrations when we were there. I don't know. They seem to go on like, I don't know, once every three weeks. There's somebody's demonstrating about something. They walk down the street and all that stuff. But it's not like what happened in Portland and, you know, and uh, also in Minneapolis. And, you know, they, they don't get out of hand and burn buildings down and beat people and stuff like that. They just go through the streets to, you know, well, 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 we want this, not we want this. Not that there aren't demonstrations in Panama. <laughs> Yeah, but again, because, peaceful. Like, right. I don't mean like super, super peaceful. Like, you know, you could walk through the crowd and have no fear that something's going to happen to you. If anything, they would be like, hey, you want to walk with us? Yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, and you do that. And the last downside, uh, I don't know if it's a it'll turn out to be either a downside or an upside. There is a new president. He is trying economic moves that almost every country on the planet has never done it. He's taken it 180 from all the normal countries. And he believes that this will solve their problems. If it does, it is going to be an awesome country because they were super wealthy, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, hundred years ago, for sure. One of the most wealthy planets on the uh, countries on the planet. If he turns it around, it'd be amazing. But, total wild card whether he can do that or not and it may end up being still just as messed up as it was before he came into office all right let's move on to panama now so panama i know that most of our viewers are really interested in panama as mm -hmm. we are so i know you want to hear how panama compares to the other places we're talking about um one thing about panama is you can choose the area that you you want to settle in and you could be in a in a young family neighborhood an older neighborhood um, if you're more with expats you're going to be with with an older community but it's all mixed because obviously they're not segregated communities uh, but in panama we found that it was pretty easy to to get onto the social networks, to meet up with other expats, to to be welcomed and get into you know social community pretty easily. Yeah, 
and it's a really nice country. Um, pretty much no matter where you are, from we traipsed across it from one end to the other and loved all of it. The people are super friendly. Um, they're really nice. They're very helpful. Uh, it's a very safe country, no matter what end of it. I'm sure there's, my understanding is that there's, there's some areas that like kind of like no go, but then no one in the right mind would go down there. That's really cool. like a, the barrier or something that's down uh, against the Colombian border. It's like a jungle down there and some people kind of come through, but mm, so the gap there's no area. retiree in the right mind's going to be down by there. So, mm -hmm. so everything else is, you know, super safe. Um, which is great. It is cheaper than North America, that's for sure. If you're in the U.S. or Canada, it's going to be 20-25% cheaper. And they have the Pension Auto Visa, if you get that. So once you're legally retired, li living legally in the country, and you're over the age of 55, as I recall, definitely 65 and stuff like that, retirement age you know, for Social Security, um, you're going to get discounts on everything um, with that card, you just show it and all of a sudden restaurants are 25% cheaper and pretty much everything is cheaper. And although I was cutting Pat off earlier, they they definitely do make sense with with how they welcome pension pensioners, pensionado down there. Because basically, if you come in and don't become a burden to society, prove that you have enough income to maintain your um, your expenses while you're down there and don't plan to work uh, it's like they welcome you with open arms come and bring your money spend it here uh, contribute to to our country and enjoy yourself and what could be better than that yeah and what i really liked about the panamanian government and the way they handle things first off they're pretty high tech um, when we were going through to get schedules and stuff, it was like boom, 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 boom. You know, yes, you, and you it wasn't check, third check, world check. by any stretch. It was it was pretty smoking. You uh, jump through the yeah. hoops that they outline, and they give you what they promise. There's there's no yeah. wavering on anything. Yeah, and and that's a big deal. Like I, you know, it's kind of like business. I guess I just sort of think in business terms. You know, being in business for you know, a bazillion years. When you sort of want, if somebody makes a deal with you, you want both sides to actually come through with what they're supposed to be doing. That's what I didn't think happened with Uruguay. It's like, oh, here, do this and you can have that. We, but it was more like you might be, you maybe would mm -hmm. get that, you might. With Panama, it's like, it seems like it's just the cut and dry. You do this, mm -hmm. here's that. Mm -hmm. you do one next step, okay, here's the other card. If you want to do more, here's the third card. Now, Pensionado Visa, there's no citizenship. But again, but other other venues, visas, you know, through the system can lead to citizenship. Not aware of that, you know, we didn't really check into it because it wasn't anything that we were we were going to do. The healthcare there is good. There's a John Hopkins uh, Hospital affiliated. John Hopkins, what, I mean, what else more can you say? There are about three hospitals around Chitre. I mean, we're yeah. getting off track because we're mainly well, but, talking about Panama City here, but yeah. But yeah, plenty of health care to be found around Panama. Yeah. Uh, except if you get into some of the smaller areas, then you're going to have a ways to go. And actually, Boquete is one of those areas where there is no hospital. There yeah. are clinics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're having health issues, Boquete is a beautiful place to settle. And the climate is amazing. But if you want to be close to a hospital, you might want to be in in another metropolitan area like Devi, Chitre, Panama City, and you know some other areas yeah. that no real uh, hospitals that uh, that we ever saw around uh, Coronado either. Um, now, one of the things about Panama is you can pick your climate, which is um, different than the other countries, really, mm -hmm. because you can go from blazing hot year round to not quite as hot year round, to 75 degrees pretty much year round. You can't do that in the other two countries. One of the other benefits of Panama is it's a quick plane ride mm -hmm. to, to get into the US. I think it's like, an, I don't know, an hour and a, hour and a half, an hour and a quarter from somewhere in Florida. Um, from most anywhere yeah, in North yeah. America, it's very accessible. It, it's quick. The food is good. I mean, I'm just trying to go through some of the things that we've touched on in the other countries. The food is good in Panama. Um, it's really nice. 
the prices, as we mentioned, they're you know they're they're cheaper than North America. Um, you can definitely live better for less there, and uh, there are lots of expats, lots of expats from all over the world, English speaking, in Panama, pretty much virtually everywhere. There's expat meetings, and even in you know a town you know as small as Chitre, although that struck me as not all that small of a town. I really like Chitre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a you know nice place. Same thing with Volcan and other places. But what I'm getting at is it's going to be easy for you to find friends and um, probably ultimately lifelong friends, at least for that end of your life <laughs> or the remainder of your life. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, Pan Panama's got a lot of pluses going for it. Some downsides um, I found, you know, struck me about Panama and there's not very many is that Rents vary depending on the area, and in some areas, like and again, you can find them cheaper. But some areas, like Boquete, and some of the really nice parts of Panama City, they're again cheaper than North America, but they're not all that cheap. I think one of the downsides of Panama is the lack of good sidewalks. If anybody has mobility issues, I mean, in Panama City, you'll see a lot of good sidewalks and other areas, but then there are also a lot that are broken up. You'll be walking along and then there's a big hole in front of you with no warning. Um, walking around at night on some of those streets can be pretty tricky. You almost want to be walking with a flashlight to make sure, you know, you don't break an ankle stepping into a hole. Um, you just described all of Uruguay too. Uh, it was the same there, yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, that was true in parts of Uruguay. Not all of it, yeah. in parts. Um, true. I did not notice that in Buenos Aires. No, no. Well, big city, major city, big gigantic city. city, actually, yeah. So I think, you know, their, their infrastructure is just, you know, five or six notches above other places. Mm -hmm. One last thing about um, a downside of Panama. I mean, it's not really a big downside, but you can sort of see where it's going. So many expats are going there that they're pushing the prices up inadvertently. I'm certainly not doing it on, on purpose. No one in their right mind would do that. But, you know, they can pay a little bit more for something. So, like, okay, I'll pay a little bit more just to get it. And so the rents, you know, are climbing. Prices on some things are climbing because people can pay it. You know, because they have more money than people And I in think Panama sometimes expats just want to be generous to locals by, you know, tipping bigger, give, you know, giving more um, to help the people there because we can. And ultimately, that ends up maybe not being the best thing in the way that we're doing it with money versus with care and donations and volunteering and that sort of thing, or just providing food for people. Like there are ways of helping without handing out money. Yeah. And but the bottom line of that ultimately is it's not really going to affect you unless you live for another 40 years, probably or 30 years. Um, so yeah, a lot of that's going to oh. depend, depend on your age because it's just going to eke up. But the prices have slowly. gone up a lot, even the last five years. Yeah, but so. well, a lot, you know, but prices are going up everywhere. I mean, everything's moving. And I, I saw a thing where maybe it was four months ago, I, I, I noticed it, where the inflation rate for Panama was like four and a half percent when it was clocking, you know, seven, eight, nine, maybe higher uh, in other parts of the world, like the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think their prices are moving anywhere near as fast as, uh, you know, as North America. One of the things that I, I forgot to add in here, but I can do it now for, for probably all three countries. There's a lot of videos and you can go on, you know, on the net and, you know, find websites that'll tell you this, but I saw some videos and this sort of sums it up as to why prices don't, won't move as fast in Panama as they will in North America. The inflation rate will never get out of control and, and all that sort of stuff there um, because, you know, their, their, their economic policies are normal versus what Argentina was doing. Not politics, it's just kind of the way it is. But here's the thing. I was watching this video about Mexico and there was a Mexican um, young lady, really smart. I think she actually lived in L.A. visiting relatives, perfect English she, and also perfect Spanish. She was going through to people in Mexico in the city that she was in. And, and the question was, 
if you could have a really good job that would make you happy and you'd be thrilled to have the job, what would it be? And they're talking about, you know, the job and, well, what would that pay? Like, what kind of money would you be looking for? Long story short, it was $15,000 US when converted from Mexican pesos into US dollars. That was the dream job. They're a manager of a, probably a, a, you know, an office of a multinational, 15 grand. The, 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 average, the median or average salary in Uruguay is going to be pretty similar. So if you have most of your population making 15, 18, 19, 20 grand per year, that's what they're making. Your prices are just not going to go blowing through the roof if you have any semblance of, 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 of you know, knowledge as a government. You're going to be doing everything you can to hold that baby down. So, you know... But that's basically why the locals complain about the tourists and the expats in Panama, because their income has not risen and yet prices have. And so it's, it's the same situation. I think wherever we North Americans go, we're kind of ruining it for the locals. So we've got to be smarter about yeah. how we do this. Well, that's why I was mentioning, you know, that mm -hmm. that's the downside. The expats, new expat retirees are pushing things up. But again, because of so many non-expats in the country, it's not going to be moving like it does, you know, in the U.S. or Canada um, because everybody's making, I don't know, I don't even know what the average wage in the U.S. or Canada is, but I think it's like sixty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Uh, actually, Walmart's paying $100,000 for long-distance truck drivers. That's a starting salary. I saw it on the back of a truck. A hundred grand. <laughs> so let's... Go through the, uh, what would you pick? And I have no idea what you're going to say. Those are the three countries. If we were starting right this moment and you had to pick one, what would you do? And give me a quick reason why. I don't know that I have an answer for you. But cheater. the one thing. Cheater. Cheater. The one thing that I enjoy <laughs> is being by the water. In Panama, of course, there's ocean all around everywhere. Whether you're on the, on the Gulf side or the Pacific side, you're you've got tons of opportunity to be by the water, which is incredible. And then mm -hmm. the views when you're in the mountains, like it's just breathtaking. In Uruguay, we lived by the beach. We were by the water. Even though Argentina has tons of water, the ocean going all the way down the coast, in Buenos Aires, there really isn't a lot of waterfront areas that people spend time. I mean, there is by the dock and there's the big sculpture and everything. There's one specific area which is waterfront, but it isn't really in the areas that we spent time. And those are things that I really enjoy myself. And, and that's what I look for in a place that I want to spend a lot of time. So do you want to call a friend and get find your answer? It's, it's, <laughs> what, so what, 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 what do you say? Okay, that's Argentina. What about the other two? Well, I mean, it's just, tough though because Argentina is such a great buying opportunity now with, with the dollar going so far there. It's like if you're looking at your wallet, um, yeah. Buenos Aires is, is pretty tempting to get down there, but then if you go back and forth, you've got the long flights. Did you take a politician course? Oh. I asked you a question, and you're like, it would be everything but the answer. What's a, yeah. Pick one. Come on. Come it's on. not going to be Uruguay for all the reasons that we talked about earlier. I don't know. I, I think it has to be Panama. Okay. Okay. What would you say? Um, my, my choices are easy. If I was younger... I think, you know, again, I'm 75, coming up on 76. If I was younger, uh, I would, or am I 76 now, coming up on 77? That's, <laughs> isn't that awful? I don't, I don't remember. Holy I God. didn't catch that. You are 76. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Uh, anyway. If Old was, man syndrome. Yeah, if I, was, if I was younger, 65, 66, 67, somewhere in that range, Argentina would be instantly the choice. I'd take the gamble on the new guy. Because even if the new guy doesn't pull it off and everything goes back to the way it was, the way it was, if you have American money, was actually totally fine. It was safe. Um, prices were cheap. It was totally fine. And I know that because of our friends who live there. Um, and, you know, they tell us what's going on and all that sort of stuff. So I pick Argentina. 
Being older, though, Panama would be the choice. Uruguay, to me, was ruled out as soon as I, I felt we were being screwed um, by, the, by the country, by the and government itself. And it was itself. purely a governmental issue. Yeah, it wasn't the people. Loved the country. Loved the people. But uh, to me, that, that would be just an instant rule out. Unless for some reason they change the rules and they make it cut and dried. You do X, Y, and Z, and here's your permanent residence. And, you know, th throw in ABC, and there's your passport. If they do that, and there's no, well, I don't know, then, okay, then, then all of a sudden Uruguay would be um, in contention with Panama, although I think I would still choose Panama in that instance. So, younger person, I'd take Argentina. Older person, I would take Panama. I think in Panama you would have a much richer, fuller life with a lot of friends. If you were in Buenos Aires, you would be able to make friends there, but the trade-off is you are in a really smoking, vibrant, fun city. It's a beautiful, Lots to do. awesome city. Go watch the tango dancers. Um, yeah, Even yeah. on the corner of the street, yeah. you'll see people dancing tango and putting yeah. on a little show. It's but again, that's a younger gorgeous. thing because, you know, we're not going tango dancing. So uh, I guess we could. Old people probably do do that. That wouldn't be us, um, at least at the moment anyway, or the foreseeable future. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to go find another partner? <laughs> <laughs> Dance partner only. So that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you like this. This has been long. This is a long one. It's going to take forever to edit this baby. Um, but hopefully that gives you a really good feel for those three countries, at least our impression of it. And I think it's going to be pretty darn close to, um, you know, to way things are. Oh, one more thing. Let me throw that in here. Um, you're probably aware because you would see it on TV and other things that the Panama Canal is having a problem with water, and so therefore less ships are coming through. I think they're running at half capacity or something like that, because there's yeah. less, you know, there's been less rain, less water in Panama. It's even worse in Uruguay, where they have, have been having huge droughts in Uruguay, and water evidently was sort of rationed. Um, they had to kill an enormous amount of cattle there, because the farmers couldn't feed them because there wasn't enough rain on the crops, not enough water and things like that. So those two countries, Uruguay especially, has water problems. Um, I think Panama would be way better off than Uruguay um, to solve that water problem because there's a rainy season. Where Uruguay didn't have a rainy season that I can recall. I don't remember any rainy season there. But Panama has a rainy season mm. and when it rains, I mean, you got tons of Tons of water. It may not help the canal, but, you know, you're not going to be like, you know, you're out in Southern California going, I can't water my lawn or stuff like that. There's going to be enough water for that. So there's, there's that type of thing, too. Again, got off on a tangent, but hopefully that will be decent information. So you want to close it up there, Buckaroo, with the uh, subscribe and all that other good stuff? Yeah, we sure hope you enjoyed some of the information that we shared. And please leave your comments. We'd love to know what you hear um, in, in what we're delivering to you, what your thoughts are, what else you'd like to hear us talk about or show you. Um, really love to share lots more information. And we do have some videos coming up of some of the neighborhoods in Panama City. Yeah. Yeah. So those will be coming up pretty soon. Yeah, it'll be similar to this, although way shorter, <laughs> way shorter. So please subscribe yeah. and you'll be, you know, clicking that uh, notification bell so that you'll, you'll know when they drop. And uh, hey, say goodnight, Gracie. Come back and see us again soon. Bye for now. Ooh.